You're watching the milk go into the pump. You're watching nothing fall into there. Hello, so, friends. Full disclosure, I just filmed this video and my intro was over 10 minutes long. I scratched it and we're starting again. I do have my usual co-star. Hi, say hi. We're gonna put him in his jumper because he kept grabbing the phone before. Cause you know, in my old life, I would set up lights and tripods and cameras with SD cards. I would have notes that I prepared for days in advance. And now we have the camera propped up against the windowsill. We have a crying baby. We have no notes. We're gonna fly by the seat of our pants. Hashtag mom life. So I quickly want to make this video and talk about how I increased my milk supply. You guys, my milk came in. I had no idea what was happening. I didn't pump because I was told in the hospital by the lactation consultant, do not pump for any reason for at least six weeks. What she was trying to tell me was allow your supply to establish. What she didn't realize was that I had a baby with a tongue tie and a lip tie and he was very, very sleepy. He would try to suck. He wasn't getting any milk out and he would fall right asleep. This lasted forever. <laughs> lasted forever. I didn't get his tongue tie fixed because I didn't know about it because he was diagnosed by the original lactation consultant and the pediatrician as not having a tongue tie. And then I went to a different lactation consultant and a dentist and he was diagnosed as having the tongue and the lip tie. And then we fixed the latch after that. But for sake of this video, that's what happened. So my milk came in. I did not pump it because I was told not to because she thought my baby was sucking out the milk. The baby was not sucking out the milk. So I completely lost what I got. The whole point in telling you that that is if I could increase my milk supply and now I have a decent amount in my freezer, then you can. As long as you have drops coming out, there is hope. I promise you guys. I spent thousands of dollars that I could have been using on diapers and medical bills, pediatrician, labor and delivery, OB. I just didn't necessarily have to spend on that to try to increase this milk supply because I was hell bent on getting this breastfeeding thing down. I never thought that I needed to research it. It was my biggest regret looking back now. I thought it was gonna be natural because you're just told that it's so natural and it's not and I stress. So if you're feeling that way, that is absolutely normal. More moms that I talk to have that experience than just like this blissful experience of putting your nipple in the baby's mouth and everything just is perfect. It's not the way it is. I'm here to help you. I will tell you what worked. I will tell you all of the hundreds and thousands of dollars of things that I bought that didn't work. Save your money. The couple of things that worked like a miracle. We're gonna get you some milk and we're gonna get you a freezer stash, I promise. I gave birth before my Strep B, I think it's Strep B Group B results were in. So the pediatrician at the hospital told me that the only way that they would release me was if I took Christian to the doctor within 24 hours after releasing me. I signed papers, I didn't care. I just wanted to come home and take a shower in my own bathroom. I didn't have a pediatrician at that point and I went to any random person in her practice because she was still doing rounds the following day. Well, the pediatrician that I went to was a jerk in so many words, because I have a full video about it. If you're interested, I have my labor and delivery story, which I'll put in the cards or the description box below or both depending on what happens during editing. But that, and also the whole story of this awful pediatrician, he told me that I was too old for my milk to come in. If it did come in, it might be sour. This is 24 hours after I'm released from the hospital. My milk just wasn't in yet. It's not that it wasn't coming in. It's not that I was too old. It's not that it was sour. It's just that it wasn't there yet. It could take anywhere, I think from three to seven days, maybe sometimes more. I remember looking back vividly the day my milk came in. It was the night of that pediatrician's appointment. That doctor was just a formula pusher and didn't like me for some reason. This appointment was on Friday. He told me if I didn't fatten my baby up by Monday, he was going to put him back in the hospital. Being a first time mother, I had no idea if he was gonna come after me, if he was gonna get CPS involved. I had no idea. All I know is I came home, I tried to feed the baby. He just wasn't latching again. I cried and I made him a bottle of the formula the doctor gave us, the samples. Christian is fine, he's perfectly healthy, he's meeting all of his milestones, we're 10 months later. I'm telling you that to say, he's combo fed. He gets my breast milk, he also has formula. There is no right or wrong way to feed 
your baby. So if you need to supplement with formula, he's not gonna die, she's not gonna die, you are gonna be fine, I promise. My milk came in that night. My boobs got huge and like it was all out here and I looked in the mirror at the bathroom without a shirt on and I called Adam in there and we both just started laughing hysterically because I've never seen my boobs like this before. I was told not to pump and my baby's not removing my milk. So I went to bed that night extremely full. I remember turning to Adam and I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm getting the flu. I felt so sick, but I don't know if it was intuition. I don't know if it's just because I know my body so well that I knew I wasn't getting sick. I knew it was related to the milk and I just felt so sick from it. Well, looking back now, they call it the milk flu when your boobs get too full and the milk's not coming out. My milk was just sitting there. So after days and days and days of this, my milk diminished. Finally got the tongue tie fixed. And now I'm trying everything to get my milk back. I searched you guys and I researched and I researched and I found all of these pills and these potions and you name it, I tried it. So the first thing I tried was lactation cookies. I got myself powder that I found on Amazon and you make the cookie. So you mix in like the egg and whatever else with this powder, you cook the cookies or you could even eat the dough. I tried both just gave me the most awful gas. They did not do anything for my milk supply. My stomach was just a mess from it. I hated it. So I went to Target and I got already made lactation cookies and I got crackers because I was trying not to eat so much sugar at that point. Neither of them worked. Both again gave me the most horrific gas. Now I don't know if it was actually the cookies and the crackers themselves or if it was my body because I'm still four weeks or something right out of having a baby and my body was just, my pelvic floor, everything was just kind of a mess. But the next thing I tried was oatmeal. I've been eating oatmeal for breakfast every day for years since before I was even living with Adam before we even were thinking about having a baby that's been part of my fitness and bodybuilding and all of that stuff so I can't tell you if oatmeal helped or not some people swear by it it's something that's always been in my diet so I'm not sure but what I did do was I increased my calories because you need to eat enough and you need to be hydrated in order to produce more milk oatmeal yes increase your food Yes, increase your hydration, absolutely yes. Those are all ding, ding, ding. Another thing people swear by on social media are body armor drinks because of the electrolytes, they did not work for me. I got body armor light, so there wasn't as much sugar. Again, hard gas, that's all I got from it. I did not get more milk. I also tried lactation pills and lactation tea with fenugreek in them. Now for some women, fenugreek is a miracle. It increases their milk supply like that. For other women, it drops your milk supply dramatically. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way. I am one of those women that fenugreek dramatically decreases my milk supply. The good thing is if you use it and it decreases, you just have to stop taking it and you should get your milk back. Mother's milk tea and mother's milk supplements, eh, they were a no-go for me. I tried legendary milk supplements. I started taking sunflower lecithin, lecithin, even my doctor didn't know how to pronounce it. I didn't notice anything with it. I think a lot of people use it more to thin out their milk so they don't get clogged up. Since then, I stopped taking it daily, but if I feel like something's getting clogged or if I go too long without feeding him, which happened a couple times just because I forgot my pumps and I was in situations where he wasn't nursing, then I'll take it or one or two at night, depending on how bad, and I won't get a clog. Other supplements by Legendary Milk, I tried a whole bunch of them. Every single one of them, guess what? they did instead of increasing my milk supply which they didn't gave me horrid gas so those were all a no for me some people swear by them on amazon i don't know if it's placebo 100 percent did not work for me this is maybe a month into my breastfeeding journey i'm trying all this stuff it's really not increasing my milk i'm pumping out maybe a half an ounce on really lucky days i would get an ounce out of each side it would take me a week or over a week pumping every two or three hours to get a whole bag of milk to freeze i was talking to one of my girlfriends and she said i had so much milk and the two things Things that were recommended to me was eat malt meal cereal she's like not cream of wheat it's got to be malt meal and ovaltine but you got to get the malted chocolate one i got both of those i tried them the malt meal i stopped after a while just because now i'm adding all of this gluten into my diet and i try not to eat too much gluten so it was just i felt like everything was kind of countering each other so i took that out i left the ovaltine in for a while honestly because it tasted really good and i was putting it in my coffee to make it almost like mocha did that work or not maybe it did but i haven't seen a difference since i took it out i've been trying to take off not 
not just like baby weight, but breastfeeding weight. I actually gained more body fat between after having the baby and when I decided that I was gonna take all this stuff out because majority of it wasn't working anyway and I was just packing on pounds. Literally, I'm trying everything. For me, if I have my heart set on doing something, I'm gonna make it work. And the fact that I couldn't, especially with my body, I've been an athlete my whole life. I've gained weight for things. I've cut weight for things. I've been able to control my body for so long and the fact that I was so out of control with this was making me not I'm gonna figure out how to do it I'm gonna figure out how to manipulate my body and then I'm gonna teach you right well I guess that's what I'm doing what I did but it was so excruciating in the moment that I would honestly have tried anything at the risk of my own health and that's what happened so Ovaltine I kept in multiple meal I took out everything that wasn't working for me I stopped doing in the moment I would give it a week or two didn't work or it would cause awful side effects one of you guys on my YouTube videos thank you Jesus what did work for me said the one and only thing that worked for me was brewer's yeast at this point i'm trying everything let me give it a shot i added brewer's yeast it was like the mama brand i'll put a picture of it there and i'll definitely link it below because it worked for me i think it said like three tablespoons and then i didn't know if it was a day or a meal so i think i took it wrong in the beginning but i'm down to two heaping teaspoons sometimes one teaspoon depending on where my milk is at depending on if i want to make more or less like when i came back from the stomach flow i just added two teaspoons i personally Personally, put it in water. If they say you can put it in food, you can bake with it. I don't care for the taste of it. So I just put it in water mixed with greens powder that has chocolate in there. I don't do that for my milk, by the way. I do that more for my health. I also tried, I forgot this, moringa powder is supposed to be amazing for your milk. I took it for a while. It's supposed to be a natural laxative. Unfortunately for me, it caused opposite issue. So I was extremely constipated when I took it. And what's interesting is my milk that I have in the freezer when I was taking moringa powder, it's like one of the best things for you. It smells like moringa, but I couldn't continue it. I tried two different brands. Maybe I should try another one. For me, it just was not a fit for my body. Moringa powder is on the fence. Try it, see if it works for you. It's not gonna do anything bad for you or the baby. It's so healthy. But if you notice you're having GI issues, first of all, it is a laxative. Leave it to my body to do something opposite of what it's supposed to do. Orgist, yes, girl, yes, yes. I get the debittered, debittered one from Amazon. I tried the chocolate flavor. To me, it tasted awful. It tasted like stale bread. The brewer's yeast I take that I can like handle. Still, you guys, my sister described it best. When she started taking brewer's yeast, her supply shot through the roof. <laughs> she described it so perfectly. She said, it tastes like I'm licking the floor of a beer garden. It does. It kind of has like a beer flavor. There is absolutely no alcohol in there. It's not yeast that's going to give you a yeast infection. I researched the heck out of this because I'm like, do I really need to be adding yeast to my diet? It's fine. It's a ton of B vitamins. I haven't had any issues from it whatsoever. Aside from the taste, you just have to figure out and play with how it's going to work for you to get the taste down. People mix it with juice. People mix it into their oatmeal. I was doing that for a little while and it was palatable. I just changed what I was eating for breakfast. I still eat oatmeal, but I make it in a pancake. I put it in my pancake. The brewer's yeast, it ruined my breakfast that I was enjoying. Here he comes. He's going to grab the phone. That's why I'm close. Okay, we're going to hold this. The other thing that worked so well for me. Okay, we had to change location. Little man kept grabbing the phone. But one of my girlfriends told me about this supplement when her daughter was sick with an awful stomach bug. She's like, I always keep this in the house. I suggest you guys keep it in the house. And my girlfriend, Kat, is really obsessed with it too. It's called Liquid IV. They're hydration multiplier packets. So I guess it's supposed to do the same thing as Body Armor, but Body Armor did not agree with me. My stomach was terrible. This does the exact same thing. It hydrates you. There is a little bit of sugar in there. I'm okay with it. Usually I'll drink it after a workout or after I'll go for like a nice long walk with CJ. So my muscles are a little bit depleted anyway. That's how I get around that. They have delicious flavors. They were kind enough to give me a discount code for you guys and i'll put all the links in the discount in the description box below those were the two things external we'll get to the other stuff that you can personally do but those are the two external things i did that was like night and day everything else save your money i promise you save your money brewer's yeast liquid iv lots of hydration and food now what you can do you need to pump breastfeeding like i said over and over and over again is a supply or like i saw over and over and over and over again on so many videos, so much research. It's a supply and demand thing. The more that you get out of your breasts, the more it's gonna tell your body that you need milk. It needs to make more milk. Whether that be pumping, whether that be 
feeding the baby or a combo of the two. For me, it was a combo of the two. I thought, well, then I'm gonna pump when my baby's not eating. I'm gonna pump for 40 or 50 minutes straight, right? If I can get a little bit out in 10 minutes, if I can get like a lot out in 50 minutes, why not? Absolutely not, that is the worst idea ever. I learned the hard way. You're gonna give your nipples trauma, you're gonna hurt yourself. The absolute best advice I was given was feed your baby for 15 minutes and then pump for another five or 10 minutes. Feed your baby for 15 minutes and then pump for another five or 10 minutes. That's just telling your body that you need it to make a little bit more milk. And then every time it needs to make a little more milk and a little more milk and a little more milk. So that's one way to do it when your baby's eating. The next thing that tremendously increased my supply is called power pumping. So what you do is, I think this is right. I'm gonna have to look it up and put it on because I haven't power pumped a long time because I was able to increase my supply this way and then I didn't need to. But you pump 10 minutes, you take a break for 10 minutes. Pump for 10 minutes, you take a break for 10 minutes, you pump for 10 minutes, you take a break for 10 minutes. You could also do 20 minutes, 10 minutes, you could do five minutes, 10 minutes. There's all kinds of charts all over online, but you're doing this because you're basically mimicking when a baby cluster feeds, when they're in a growth spurt and they wanna eat on demand all the time. You're trying to trick your body into thinking that your baby's growing and it needs more milk and it's cluster feeding, so it's eating more frequently. That's what you're doing when you power pump. Another thing, my sister suggested this to me, and it worked really well, take a nursing vacation, which is easier said than done, but if you could do this, amazing. If you can't, I get it. Sit on the couch in comfortable clothes with your baby and feed them. Do nothing else. Netflix, movies, a nursing vacation. I did it for three days. It helped my milk tremendously. Oh, another thing that was suggested to me that I thought was so smart, look at pictures of your baby or things that make you happy while you're pumping. Milk supply also relies a lot on oxytocin and we're so stressed out, I'm the worst offender, that I'm not making enough milk. You know, you're watching the milk go into the pump, you're watching nothing fall into there. So that's another thing. Try to cover the container that the milk is going into when you're pumping. Don't watch it. I would watch it and just get more depressed and more stressed. Don't. Cover that, think of happy stuff. And the easiest advice to give and hardest advice to take is to not stress about it. Your baby is gonna be okay. You're gonna make more milk. You just have to keep emptying your breasts. Pumping, feeding your baby, not stressing, nursing vacation. There is no supplement in the whole entire world. Nothing you could do or eat that is going to replace supply and demand, unfortunately. I guess fortunately, because it's the beauty of your body, unfortunately, because our lifestyles nowadays are not the lifestyle of just sit around and do nothing all day. I get it, it's stressful, you got this. Pump, feed, Brewer's yeast and liquid IV are going to help you tremendously. Just give you that little extra oomph and then you're good. Don't worry about the other supplements. Don't worry about the other stuff that people say you have to get. It's the only thing that's gonna make you make more milk and you need this miracle supplement. It's not true, you guys, save your money. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I could do a follow-up video. Back to real mom life, look at this room. What are you doing, Bubba? I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.